Welcome back to our podcast. I'm the gentleman accompanied by the disturbed Southern Bill. Hello. And today I figured since we were going to cover Japanese cryptids and stuff like that, I'd focus mainly on the yokai, which are Japanese spirits, some malevolent, some not. Okay. And unfortunately, the bell covered some of my favorite ones. So I figured I'd go with more, well, more or less lesser known ones. All right. The first being the Jorogumo, also known as the Spider Woman. This is fairly interesting to me. It's kind of weird because in Japan, it's said that if a orb weaver spider lives to be 400 years old, it gains the ability to turn into a beautiful woman whom then entrances men and traps them in webs they weave to feed on them. Well, that is weirdly specific. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. That's crazy, though. That's a cool legend or a myth, whatever, you know, definitely. The reason I love this one personally is because it took me way back it's when I was 12 years old. I used to love this show called Gravity Falls. Right. One of the episodes was, was focused on this type of creature. Mm. So. So, yeah, that is cool. I mean, my soul blast from the past. Right. So, yeah, it's definitely a cool story, though. Absolutely. Next is the Gasha de Coro, also known as the Starving or Huge Skeleton. That's kind of contradictory when you think about it, but. Huge, just, huge being tall. Okay, gotcha. That's what I was going to say. Huge I mean, just being proportionate, tall. but tall. Right. Okay, gotcha. So, as the name implies, these yokai are giant skeletons, typically 15 the size, or 15 times the size of a normal human being. Good God, that is huge. Yep. The name is not an understatement. It's not. 15 times. Wow. Yep. Typically made up of the human remains of those who have died on the battlefield or during a famine. So that's where the starving comes from. Gotcha. See, they usually hunt humans and consume them around 2 a.m. and are said to have glowing eyes, either yellow or green, and are only destroyed after their pent-up rage from having died on a battlefield or, again, during a famine, consumes them and they disintegrate. Good grief. Yep. That's very freaky. Apparently, that's the only way to destroy them, is to just manage to survive. Until they (laughs) they just get more and more rageful, so they're just getting more and more dangerous until they just eventually burn up. That's crazy. And there's no set time, either. There's no set lifespan, from what I can find. Right. Good grief. That's a freaky one. Yep. The next is... The Jubico, or Jubico, whatever, also known as vampire trees. So they look like normal trees from whatever region you're in. Right. However, if as you get closer, you'll realize that something isn't quite right with these trees as you see mounds of human remains near the base of it. Good grief, I would say not. Oh my God. Apparently this is completely impossible to notice until you it- get... A certain distance. That's even more nuts. Oh, okay. So, by the time you're able to see it, it will have been too late because they can uh, ensnare you with their branches. Okay. And these branches have tube-like twigs that can suck out all of your blood. And then the birds and insects will consume whatever remains until all that's left is a pile of bones. Ugh, that's not disturbing at all. I mean, good grief. Japanese spirits are something else. Right, so this thing has got like vine-like things that come out and then just suck off your blood out. Oh my god. Yep. That's nuts. So, these trees were once normal trees. However, if a bloody battle has taken place... The spilt blood is soaked into the roots, and that is what transforms them into these yokai. Well, that's kind of disturbing, too. Yep. I mean, just thinking about a battle going on or something, and all this blood enough to soak into the roots of a tree, that'd be a bloody battle. Well, I mean, yeah, that does make sense, because this originates from a long time ago, before guns and stuff were used. 
So the main form of combat was sword, sword spears, stuff right. like that. So it would be a very bloody battle. Exactly. So that's kind of disturbing too, because it's kind of like almost like the spirits or something are sort of soaking in with it. You know, yeah. they're right vengeful spirits. So yeah, that's a creepy one, definitely. So next is the Obarian, which is a type of imp who jumps onto the back of unsuspecting passerby. And this name come, come, comes from the phrase Obarion, which people would say when asking for a piggyback ride. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it makes sense, but yeah, that's kind that's of That's how funny. it rides on you right. in a piggyback <laughs> style. So one legend says that this yokai would get heavier with each step of their victim until it crushes them. Goodness. Yeah. That is really disturbing. And you can't get it off. I'm nope. assuming, you know, what's Not from what I found. So it's like. From what I found, you don't even know it's there, really. You don't notice it. Well, or you don't know what nuts. it is, rather. Right. You just think. You're you getting... just feel the weight. Right. That is crazy. <laughs> that really is. That is. So, on the exact opposite end of the spectrum, there's another legend that says that this creature would turn into a sack of gold as a reward if the traveler can bear their weight for a certain amount of time. Okay, well, I mean... So it's a coin flip on whether so, you die or you get gold. Right. It would have to be not enough to crush. So, I mean, yeah. you know, so I guess how much weight is it? So, it's a small, like I said, it's a it's size of an imp. But I, it's making its weight heavier and heavier. How how heavy is it, I wonder? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how much weight are you having to carry before you get this sack of gold? <laughs> is it worth it or not? Even, or because you're going to be, like, crippled for a lot mm. for doing it. Who knows? What I'm thinking is that since the depictions I've seen depict it as being the size of a dwarf or right. a human with dwarfism, right. whatever, it would weigh about the much about that much in terms of that story of that legend so it'd be fairly heavy but around 100 pounds ish depending give or take know. yeah well, and they're not big either they're kind I mean, of that slim. would be a lot to carry but yeah i mean that would be uh, bearable you know wouldn't yeah mess you up or something kind of thing later on that'd probably cause you back pain oh well yeah i but, mean you know yeah. strain and stuff but you know yeah something you could actually so yeah that would be worth it <clears throat> to get your little bag of gold. <laughs> again, there's no, well, not again, but there's no real guarantee on how big the bag of gold be, could right. be. It could be just the size of a 16 ounce bottle of root beer. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. That, then, well, then that kind of sucks if you don't know how, how much you're getting. Because, like you said, it could be one bag big enough just to hold one little tiny coin the size of a penny could or be. something. That would be my luck. Yeah, really. Our fifth entry into this story is the Ningyo, I think. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Well, It'll show up on the screen anyways when I edit it. So, these are also known as the human fish. Unlike the beautiful mermaids from our Western folklore, these spirits are described as deformed beings, more fish than human in most instances. Oh, okay. That makes you think of those weird mermaids on Saturday Night Live, you know, yeah. <laughs> that were like, some were pretty and some were like really weird looking. Personally, it made me think of the H.P. Lovecraft stuff. Well, yeah, that too. The fish folk. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the place or the story right, specifically, but, yeah, but I know they were Yeah, playing. they look like fish. Their heads and stuff literally look like fish heads. Yeah, yeah like that was, one game. It was weird. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, yeah, that could be a good comparison as well. I done lost my place in the script. All right. So some depictions of this yokai say that they are beings with human torsos and faces and then fishtails like standard Western mermaids. mermaids. Right. However, the other is the exact opposite of the spectrum where they have the top half as fish and the bottom half it was human. Legs. Oh god, that would be weird. How would that even survive? <laughs> I don't know. It couldn't swim very fast. There's no way. Because, you know, it would have that. I mean, it would have flippers, but, but it had human legs. Yeah, human legs to propel it. And that's what it, the tail is what makes it go. And Who knows? Maybe it doesn't need to be in water to survive. Maybe. This is a spirit, so. Well, yeah, but I was thinking that, you know, you would think it would have gills. 
if it, you know, had the top part, but... Well, yeah, but if it's already a dead creature, right. it doesn't really need to be stay alive. Okay, so if it doesn't have to breathe, then yeah, I guess it could just walk around. I don't know what it would do with those little flippers as arms, but whatever. Okay. To be fair, there's also the uh, Hashishak, Hashisakusama or whatever. I can't pronounce the name. The woman that was cut in half by the train. Oh, yeah. The Teki Teki. Yeah, Teki Teki. So our sixth and last entry is a story titled Shio no Chojiro. And this one is probably the most interesting, in my opinion. So long ago, in Oshio no Ora, lived a very wealthy man by the name of Chojiro. Now, this man was fond of eating meat, which was illegal and considered taboo in feudal Japan. Okay. And he kept 300 horses on his land. Okay. And whenever one died, he would butcher it and pickle the meat in either salt or miso. Now, that doesn't sound safe in a way because how did it die? You know yeah. what I mean? What if it had some kind of disease or something? That's, now, I'm not saying it did, you know, but. I'm thinking, like, if this is a story based in reality, like a lot of them are. Right. Especially a lot of these Japanese yokai stories. Right. I think I might have a theory. I'll explain it later. Okay. So, he would always have a stock of this meat since he would kill one whenever it died. Right. However, his stock would eventually dwindle. And my personal theory behind this is even though he had so many horses, he did not, or he either didn't breed them properly or there was something majorly wrong Mm -hmm. and they were just killing over too fast. Right. So basically he ran out of horses faster than he could breed new horses. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So with this, uh, lack of meat, it drove him to butcher an old workhorse that had become too old to work. Right. And according to some stories, this was the moment that he had cursed himself. Because from this point on, he had been haunted by the spirit of this old horse. And so every night, the spirit of this horse haunted Shojiro and would snap at his neck. Well, that's... Not crazy. actually hurting him. Right. That's very creepy. You don't normally hear about a ghost horse, especially an aggressive one. You know, you might hear about like someone riding one or you just see one. To be fair, one. he killed and butchered this thing. Well, I so. know. I'm not saying that it doesn't have the right. I'm just saying you don't usually hear about it. So True. it's actually kind of good. It, it's getting its vengeance. It's <laughs> rightful vengeance. My God. Yeah. So furthermore, at every evening, evening at the exact same time, that he had butchered the horse, it would appear to him and force itself down his throat and thrash around in his stomach. Jesus. Well, <laughs> I didn't, I wouldn't think that would be very pleasant at all. My nope. gosh. Even if it is a ghost horse, I'm assuming, you know, it's not, you know, the size of a horse, of course, but good grief. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> I'm assuming he could probably feel its hoofs and stuff if it yeah, was thrashing around. Yeah, he felt everything. Oh my god, I couldn't imagine that. Ugh. The story describes the pain he felt as pure agony. I guess so. Ooh. And this pain eventually drove him mad. So mad that he began to confess all of his sins in a painful delirium after he had seemed to come down with a fever. Mm-hmm. And my personal theory behind this is that the horse mate had become spoiled in some way, or it was sick. Yeah, that could definitely explain that, absolutely. Because it also describes that he had began to hallucinate. Right. So, yeah. Who knows? Or it could have even been food poisoning a little bit, too. Yeah, too. If it hadn't been prepared properly. Yeah. And since it was so old. And how long had they, when he was butchering the ones that had died, how long had they been laying there? too before he found them sometimes i don't know you know there's a lot of things could be going on there so after all of this had happened he would called for doctors priests and they would look at him try to treat him and priests would pray for him nothing seemed to help right and exactly 100 days after he had killed this horse and became cursed Mm -hmm. he succumbed to the curse and had eventually passed on but it was said that when his body was found, it was shaped exactly like that of a horse who had spent its entire life carrying heavy loads. 
Well, that's really creepy, too. Yep. I guess he got his all the way around, in a way, so to speak. Tenfold. My goodness. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that he didn't deserve it, but... I don't know if he deserved that, but... Yeah, that is a lot, you know. I mean, it is typically considered, I guess, taboo to kill, cook, and eat horses. Right. Here in the West, at least. Or, well, yeah. I mean, it's definitely not something that's normal. I don't know about the laws in Japan when it comes to this stuff nowadays, right. but... I wouldn't either, but I mean, I wouldn't... I've never heard of it being, like, something that's normal, so... No, neither have I. You know, that's but, creepy. yeah. Those were some good ones, definitely. I don't think I've heard any of those, and those were good. Like Absolutely. I said, I tried to focus on the lesser-known ones well, just because... Those good. That reason, right. exactly. Yeah, because both, you know, you haven't heard of them, and then some of them have some really out there backstories and some of those did just, like this yeah so exactly so yeah they're worth the dig sometimes so i'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast by far one of my favorites to write just because i have known about none of these prior to this except this last story and that's the reason i wanted to actually say this last story rather than just make it a standard description of what the curse is and why it happened right if you're interested in learning more about japanese yokai i do recommend using my sources for this yokai.com as it from what i've seen does there is an index of countless different ones right and that's where this last story came from i also used an article from the collector.com for the or for entries one through five. Right. And I guess that's it for me, so I will turn it over to to the bell. Okay, so our next country that we're going to talk about some of the disturbing folklore in would be Mexico. Oh, that's going to be good. So that's what we're picking up on our next episode will be Mexico. We're going to be talking about some of the, well, just twisted tales from there, haunted places, and, of course, the Day of the Day. Good old Dia de los Muertos. Exactly, which is always very interested me. So it's going to be me fun too. to talk about that and just some of the traditions. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. And don't forget to stay, stay disturbed. disturbed.